Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on this Rosie the Riveter or as I like to call it, Rosita the Riveter, since I am Mexican, I had to spice her up a bit. And there is a bit of a backstory to this tutorial. Some of you might have seen that I posted it on Instagram. I did a photo and then this little Instagram video, which was a sponsored video that I did in partnership with Buxom. They reached out and they wanted me to do a a uh, Halloween tutorial specifically for Instagram. And I was like, you know what? Buxom is known for their lip products. I'm gonna focus on the red lip and do a Rosie the Riveter look. So long story short, since it was just gonna be an Instagram video, I didn't do the hair on camera and I did the makeup over music. I didn't talk you guys through it. And when I was done with the Instagram video, I just fell in love with the look, everything about it, what it represented, Rosie the Riveter, the outfit, the makeup, the hair, that I couldn't just leave it as an Instagram video because I knew you guys would love it as well. So I'm back today to film the hair portion of this tutorial. So the makeup might um, look a little different in the intro and outro because the makeup was filmed on another day and I had to come back today to redo the hair on camera for you guys. So if you're interested and wanna see how I create this Rosie the Riveter look, Keep on watching. I cannot take credit for this hairdo because I do not know how to do pinup hair. I didn't even know where to start. So what I did was I, I went to YouTube, obviously, and I searched pinup hair and this amazing YouTuber popped up. Her name is Pinup Doll Ashley Marie. And the tutorial I did is this one right here called My Go-To Quick Pinup Hairstyle. Uh, nasty to classy. So if you guys want to see her do it, go to her channel. I'm gonna do it here and just give some more tips. And as someone who has never done pinup hair, I'm gonna kind of explain um, what I learned along the way. So the first thing she did was section off what is gonna be the bangs. I'm just gonna do like a little U shape at the crown of the head and make that the bangs. I'm gonna be using a one and a quarter inch curling iron. What you're gonna do is curl the hair inward. I did use the way memory mist when I did it the first time around just because my hair is on the longer, longer-ish side. It's not really that long and it doesn't hold such a perfect curl really well if I'm starting to mess with it. So I'm just going to spray my hair with this. I don't know if it's meant to be a hairspray or what, but it does work when it comes to holding style. So with the clamp facing outward, I'm going to tuck the curling iron underneath at the root, pull it out, and curl in, and then you're gonna release a little more. This is how I curl longer hair, because if not, most of the curl stays at the bottom. So by starting at the root, and then going down, and then holding it at the top like this, you get a curl from the root all the way down versus just at the bottom. And just hold it for a bit, don't burn your hair, just make sure it's hot. You can let it go. You're just gonna let it sit there, don't do anything to it, don't hairspray it, just let it live, let it cool off and work on the rest of the pieces. And then from here, you wanna let them cool down just a bit before you start teasing the hair because last time I didn't wait and the curls started undoing themselves. So just give them a second to cool down and then we're gonna tease the hair. So just tease at the root. I'm using this Harry Josh brush. Anything with these type of bristles works really well for teasing. This one's a little big, but it works. So again, just go section by section and tease at the root. It's gonna look crazy for just a moment, but <laughs> it'll pull itself together. So now that we've teased everything, flip it to the other side and just brush it over. This is why you wanna let the curls cool down a bit because once you start brushing, it can undo them. So just be really gentle when brushing over the teased areas. And once it looks pretty smooth, you wanna grab some hairspray. I'm using a very strong hold hairspray. This is the BB Strong Finish Firm Hold Hairspray. Another one that I really like is Big Sexy Hair. That one will lock your hair in place as well. But this stuff is like glue. I am telling you, I had to take a shower to take my hair down because it was so intense. So what I like to do is just hold the hair up and then spray right here. And then brush it through one more time to make sure everything looks really smooth. And now this next part is where it can get a little tricky and I'm not gonna lie, I had to do it a couple of times to get it right. 
Again, my hair is longer, so to create that curl that Ashley Marie had in her video, I kind of have to fake it because the curl's not gonna end there since my hair is so long. What you're gonna do is I tucked one finger underneath, or maybe even two, and I just wrapped the hair like so. And just play with it a bit until you get the desired finish. Again, with her hair, it was shorter, so the curl ended right here. For me, I have to tuck it in. And I kind of just faked it and did this. And then I had another section. So actually, let me just, I'm going to leave one little tiny section out right here to create another swoop on the side. Don't get frustrated if it doesn't work the first time because I'm telling you, I had to undo it and redo it like six different times. So hold it up, tuck your finger underneath. You can even smooth it over this direction and start the curl. And then once I have it where I want it, I kind of pull this area back a little just to create that volume. Once you have it where you want it, you can pin it. And I'm gonna go from the back. I think I'm gonna add one more bobby pin back here just to hold it down because it's looking a little loose back there. And voila, we have the front swoop. We're gonna create a separate curl down here. So I already hairsprayed it just a tiny bit. I'm gonna curl around the fingers. Using your fingers really helps to create that curl when you have long hair because if not, it's just really hard to get a perfect curl with really long hair. So just get it where you want it. And again, we're just gonna pin right here too just so that it stays. And again, once you got it to look the way you want it to, just hairspray it down. Ta-da! The bangs are done. And this is the hardest part of this entire tutorial. From here, it gets a lot easier. So all we're gonna do is start curling the rest of the hair. I'm gonna mist all of the hair at once with the Way Memory Mist. So again, start at the root. Curl back up. I'm actually gonna pin this back as I go because it gets in the way. So start at the root, slide down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and curl the rest of my hair and then show you guys how to get it in the scarf. For this next part, I really, really don't want you to overthink it. All you're gonna do is start pinning the hair on the top of the head. It doesn't have to be perfect because the scarf is gonna cover most of the hair. Um, mine's really thin. It's I, I'm pretty sure it's a costume scarf. It has a wire in it. Um, the thicker the scarf, the better because it'll cover most of the hair if it looks messy in the back. So I'm gonna start with this front piece right here because that's how Ashley Marie did it. <laughs> And this is the only piece I want looking kind of smooth since it's right at the front. And all you're gonna do is literally have some bobby pins on deck. I'm just going to pin it like so. I'm gonna grab this front piece now, pull it straight back and up, and pin it. And you're gonna do the same thing all the way around until all of the hair is at the top of the head. Okay, so now that I have it all up top, I'm just going to start further pinning the curls where I want them to go because my hair is so long that it's, you know, this doesn't look nice. So just further grab them. Again, don't overthink it. Just grab them and pin them. That's all you're gonna do. So I just kind of bunch these all up. I'm gonna put a little bobby pin right there. And you can fix it more once you have uh, the scarf on. Also, you can see which curls are sticking out, which ones don't look good. But for now, you just want to get them all up top. This still looks pretty nuts, but I'm going to add the scarf anyway so I can further adjust the curls. So I'm going to take the scarf, tuck it under, and you want the bow to land right behind those two curls we created earlier. So right here, get it nice and tight right there, and then twist it around. And because it's Rosie the Riveter, it's not really a bow, it's more like 
straight. So instead of flaring out the bow like this, I just kind of made it tighter like that. So now again, I'm just gonna further adjust the curls, even my front one's coming a little loose. That is all that there is to it. Once you've gotten the curls where you want them to go, the look is done. And here is the final hairdo. As you guys saw, it's not that complicated. Again, do not overthink this. It's all about just um, playing with the curls, pinning them and unpinning them until you get the desired finish. I honestly think this looks a hundred times better than the first time I did the hair, but even the first time I did it, even though this didn't uh, look the way I wanted to, it still worked for the look. You know what I'm saying? So you guys can make it work. Just play with it a little, don't get frustrated, and don't give up. And now with the hair done, let's move on to the makeup tutorial, which again is gonna be a voiceover. So I'll see you guys at the end of this video. I'm priming my skin with the Glossier Priming Moisturizer because I'm going for a full coverage heavy glam on the skin, so I wanna make sure everything is nice and hydrated. And then for that full coverage, I'm using the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. This was actually my first time trying out this foundation and it is definitely full coverage as you guys can see. So I also applied it to my eyelids and used it as a base for the eyeshadow look. And then to add some more coverage and highlight the center of the face, I'm going in with Tarte's Shape Tape. To set everything in place, I'm using the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder and with that same sponge I used to apply my foundation, I'm pressing the powder into any areas that crease up a lot like the eyelids and underneath the eyes and then for the rest of the skin, I'm using a powder poof or puff, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> And before I do anything else, I'm gonna bronze up my skin using the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Bronzer. I'm just applying it to the same areas I generally apply bronzer, so hollows of the cheeks, forehead, jawline, down the neck, and also a little bit on the sides of the nose. So now that the base is done, let's move on to the eyes. First, I'm going to fill in my brows using the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the shade Soft Brown. And lately, I've been filling in my brows up top first and then filling in the bottom afterwards. I don't know, I've been getting more of a natural finish when I do that. So just filling them in, brushing them out to give an even more natural finish. And then I'm using this uh, customizable Buxom palette from my Instagram video to complete the eyes. Um, so you wanna stick with more of a taupey eyeshadow color. You don't want anything that is too warm for this look. So I started off with that lighter shade and I'm just really buffing that into the crease. And then I'm also gonna be applying this to the lower lash line. I'll make sure to include all of the colors and all the products I use in this video in the description box for you guys. So now that I have the transition shade, I'm going in with another eyeshadow that is similar in tone, just a little bit darker to further deepen up this look. So again, applying it to the crease and lower lash line. This look would not be complete without a bold winged liner. So I'm using Kat Von D's Trooper Liquid Liner to build this wing. It's seriously the best. It makes doing a winged liner so easy. And what I like to do is just outline the wing first and then completely fill it in. Before going in with lashes, I'm using Buxom's Big Tease Mascara, and honestly, this mascara was so black, it really intensified the look of my lashes, but because of that bold, thick wing, I did have to go in with some falsies to further make them pop, so I'm using Velour's Wispy Me Sweet Nothings Lashes. Wow, that is really hard to say. And then to further blend those lashes into the real lashes, I'm using Hold The Line Waterproof Liner by Buxom in Call Me, which is a black liner. And then for blush, I'm using Marc Jacobs Night Fever and Hot Stuff. Since I am doing a red lip, I want a blush with a similar tone. And then, of course, you can't forget about Fix Plus, especially with such a full coverage. You want it to all melt into your skin and look really natural. So I'm just going in with 
Fix Plus. What am I saying? <laughs> I couldn't not go in with a highlight even though I feel like a highlight is not very uh, reminiscent of that era, but we're trying to make uh, Rosita the Riveter a little more modern, so we're adding some highlight with this Hourglass palette. I'm using the color Pure Strobe Light from the Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. And the same thing goes for the inner corner part of the eyes. I could have left the matte, but I couldn't help myself and decided to add that same highlighter to the inner part of the eyes. And then once I was done highlighting, I went in with this brush by Hourglass and just buffed everything out to give it more of a natural finish. And then I used my Benefit 24 hour brow setter to set my brows in place. I didn't fluff them up as much this time. I kind of slicked them back and I also used the gel to brush back my little baby hairs. And because I've already used my Fix Plus or Setting Mist, whatever you want to use, I can now go back in and apply mascara, that same one I used earlier to the lower lash line. And then finally, for the red lip, which really makes the entire look, I'm using Buxom's Plump Line Lip Liner in the shade Cloak and Dagger. And for that red lip, I'm using Toxic Cherry Big and Sexy Bold Gel Lipstick, also by Buxom. And then, I almost forgot, you gotta add the beauty mark to really complete this look. So I'm using Buxom's Hold The Line Waterproof Liner in the shade Here's My Number. I'm just pressing it onto the area where I want it and we are done. And that completes the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed creating it for you guys. If you aren't familiar with Rosie the Riveter, I highly recommend doing a little research on her. She is such a huge symbol of women empowerment. So I just wanna remind you guys that us as women are so much stronger when we lift each other up and not tear each other down. So support one another, love one another, and we are stronger than any man could ever think we are. Um, one last thing I wanted to mention is that this blue jumpsuit I already had on hand. I've worn it so many times, I need to stop wearing it, but it's honestly just an easy go-to outfit for me. Um, if you can't find a blue jumpsuit to wear with this look, a dark blue denim button-up collared shirt should work really well also. Just roll up the sleeves, flex on them, and you're good to go. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.